If you've ever tried to join the open Wi-Fi in an airport, hotel, coffee shop, or on an airplane, you've almost definitely ended up stuck behind one of those annoying pop-up portals asking for your email or a login in order to access the internet. We'll explain how these captive portals work and how easy it is to get around them, coming up next. In order to bypass the captive portal, we'll need to scan the local area and find someone who's already authorized to connect to the network. Once we find the MAC address of their device, we can simply swap our MAC address for theirs and connect to the network without seeing a portal at all. Now, the reason this works is because open Wi-Fi networks like those operated by cities or sometimes by coffee shops keep track of who's allowed and who isn't with the whitelist. Now, once you've been authorized, you're added to the whitelist and it keeps track of you via your MAC address. Now, we can change this pretty easily, so by scanning the area and finding one that's already authorized, we can gain access just by swapping it and uh, making ours look like theirs. So to do this, we'll need a network card that can be put into wireless monitor mode. Now, some internal cards may be able to do this, but if not, or if yours only scans on maybe 2.4 gigahertz, you can get a powerful wireless network adapter for relatively cheap with this PAU09 dual band 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network adapter. Once we're in wireless monitor mode, We'll use Kismet or AeroDump in order to scan the local network and find a user who's already authorized to connect to the network. Once we find their MAC address, we'll use MacChanger to change our MAC address for theirs, so when we connect to the network, we won't see a login portal at all. Finally, we'll show you how this works by going to a local coffee shop and using it to bypass the login authentication portal. So, let's get started. First, we'll need to make sure we have all the tools we need installed on our system. Kali should come with most of these pre-installed, but to make sure, we can type apt get install macchanger and aircrack ng. As you can see, we have the most current version of both of these installed on our system, so we can proceed to the next step. Now, macchanger is helpful because it allows us to change our MAC address. Now, the MAC address is typically set by the manufacturer of the device that we're using to access our internet. Now, this uniquely identifies our device and also lets somebody know what the manufacturer of it is. So they can tell if it's, a, for example, a Dell or a iPhone or something like that. So this can kind of give away a little bit about you if someone knows what your device is or otherwise there could be maybe a vulnerability that's particularly for like an Apple device. And you might want to prevent other people from knowing what kind of system you have uh, when it's not necessary to let them know in the first place. So to do that, we would just need to randomize the MAC address of the card you're using to connect to the internet. So to do this is pretty simple. We'll just type sudo IPA, and that'll give us a list of all the different wireless cards that are connected to our computer. So here we can see w WLAN0 is the name of the card we want to use. So we can type sudo MacChanger, tack R for random, and WLAN0 for the card we want to change. Now this failed because our card is currently still up, which means it's ready to accept network connections. So to bring it down, we'll type sudo ifconfig WLAN0 to bring the card down. Oops, sorry. WLAN0 down. This will bring the card down and allow us to rerun the previous command, which should change the MAC address, there we go, to a random number. Now, if we were to connect to a wireless network, the person who is administering it would have no idea that our device is a Linux device or that our hardware was built by any particular manufacturer. And we can rerun this command as many times as we want to continue randomizing and making it look like our device is a totally new device trying to join the network. Next, it we'll need to find the particular MAC address that is already authenticated to an open wireless network using a captive portal so that we can piggyback on that to essentially sneak into the whitelist by changing our MAC address to match that of one that's already connected. So we'll start by scanning using Aircrack uh, AeroDump NG, and we can also use Kismet if you followed us our previous video on how to set that up and use it to find uh, wireless networks with clients attached. 
Now in order to find a network with a captive portal, we've gone to our local coffee shop. We've gone ahead and connected directly to the network, but if we were to try to go to a website on the internet right now, it would just redirect us back to the same captive portal. So in order to get access, we're going to use a program called AeroDumpNG to find existing users who already have access to the network and have already agreed to the portal, which either requests an email address or terms of service or even a password in some cases. So we're going to need to use a command called IPA to take a look at our setup and look at the wireless cards that are connected to our system. Now we have two different wireless cards. One of them is WLAN 0, the card that we're currently connected to the uh, coffee shop Wi-Fi on, and the second is WLAN 1. Now WLAN 1 is currently in monitor mode, but if you need to put yours in, it, the command would be sudo airmon ng start WLAN 1. Now, when it's turned into monitor mode, or put into monitor mode, you'll see it change into WLAN1mon, but we won't run this command because ours is already in monitor mode, as you can see from the output. So the next step is to take that uh, card and use it to search the area around us with sudo aerodump ng uh, WLAN1mon and press return. Now, we'll be flooded with different networks in the area, all of which are broadcasting on different channels, but we'll very quickly see the network that we're looking for is operating on channel 11. So we can stop looking at all this noise and press Control C to cancel, go back up to the command and add TAC C11 to specify we just want channel 11, and then add TAC TAC encrypt and then OPN to tell the program we only want to see open networks. So running the command again, we suddenly see just the coffee shop Wi-Fi and then a big, long and growing list of clients that are on channel 11 that uh, are either connected to the coffee shop Wi-Fi or are looking for wireless uh, networks on the same channel. So here we see a couple already that are connected to the space station. But as we wait a little bit, this list will grow and any one of these MAC addresses is fair game to copy in order to get us into this network um, without needing to agree to those terms of service or do whatever else it is that that portal tries to get us to do. So once we pick a client, we need to be aware that this can create what's called an IP collision, where the router tries to give both us and them the same IP address, and this can act as a denial of service attack. So you need to be careful because this is also an area where you can get into trouble if you're kicking someone off the network that you're not supposed to be. So in this case, we will take our test account, which we don't need to worry about kicking off, and we will copy the MAC address so that we can put it into the MAC changer command and bypass uh, the captive portal. So we'll copy this and then the command to do this will also require us to take our network card down. So to do that, first type IPA, we'll see that WLAN0 is the name of the card we need to take down and that it's currently connected with an IP address. So we'll type sudo ifconfig WLAN0 down and that will bring us card so our card down so we're ready to proceed with the MAC changer command. So I'll type in sudo macchanger tac m for the MAC address and then paste in the MAC address we want to use. And then finally, we will type in WLAN0 as the name of the card that we're trying to change. So pressing return, we can see we've changed it to a Quanta Computer Inc. MAC address. And that means that we're ready to bring it back up and connect to the open wireless network that is supposed to now redirect us to a portal. So bringing that back up, we can type ifconfig again. We can see all this output that says we are back up and it is now attempting to connect to the open network. So let's go ahead and open up Firefox and see if we can connect to a website on the internet without being redirected. We will select and enter a test website to verify our connection. And this is where if we're redirected back to the captive portal, we'll know we, that we failed and it might be worth our time to turn off the Wi-Fi and turn it back on and see if that helps, because often it does. But in this case, we see that we've managed to load our web page normally, which means we haven't had to go through the normal portal like everybody else, and we've managed to kind of sneak in uh, by following somebody else who has already added to the whitelist. As you can see, MAC-based authentication is easy to bypass and it only takes a quick scan of the network to be able to find the MAC address needed to slip into a network that uses a captive portal. 
this can be useful for doing things like adding an IoT device that might otherwise get snagged up on a portal while trying to connect to the internet. To do this, we just spoof the MAC address of the device we wish to add, join the network ourselves, and then when our IoT device starts up, it can connect to the network without needing to worry about getting stuck. Thanks for watching this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.